Hey peeps, in today's video, we're going to create a custom sign using colored acrylic and wood. In order to create this project, we'll be utilizing the Kerf Offset feature in Lightburn. This feature will make it so our materials can fit together perfectly. Okay, so we're here in Lightburn, and we're gonna go ahead and bring in our little hammer design here that we're gonna use. I'm going to trace this image. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. This is going to be how we're going to have it in our design. And I actually want to kind of split this design so that I can have different colors here for the handle and the head of the hammer. So I'm just going to copy this. Command C, Command V. I'm going to work on this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a shape around this. And what this is going to do is it's going to help me isolate this section of the hammer from this section by utilizing the cut shapes feature. So I'm going to select both tools, cut shape. So now you can see that this section here is separated from this section here. And that's what I wanted. So now to close this shape, because right now this is an open shape and we can't use kerf offset with an open shape because it doesn't know which side is the outside or which side is the inside. We have to close these shapes. So there's a pretty easy way to do that. All right, so I'm gonna select both of those, and make them individual. Okay, so now that I have this selected here, uh, and it's ungrouped. We're going to go ahead and go to edit and then close selected path with tolerance. And what we want to do is we kind of want to draw a line across here. So we don't want to move the ends together. We want to join with line. And then we're going to move this little distance threshold till that line appears. Just like that. And that will kind of close our shape. So we're going to hit OK. And now if I select uh, select open shapes, we can see that this is not going to highlight, which is a good. So we know that this is a closed shape now. So what we're going to do now is kind of adjust this because I don't want this kick out here. So we're going to move the nodes around and I'm going to go to this little node editor here, select on this, and then we're just going to drag this node on top of this node. And now I have a perfect handle. Okay. So now we just need to do the same thing with this side. And there we go. And we have nothing highlighted, which means these two shapes are closed here, which is exactly what we want. So now let's go ahead and start our design. So I think what we want to do is put this on a little rectangle. 7.25. And then we're going to go and add a radius. So these are going to be all of our cut lines. Let's put some text on here. All right, so this is basically what our design is going to look like, but we want to not only engrave this with project time, but we actually want to put some powder coat in there and then kind of burn the powder coat. So we're gonna to have to create another layer that we can use a lower setting to melt our powder coat with our air assist off. And we also want to cut some acrylic in different colors. So we're gonna to have to basically copy this. So that's what we'll do now. Command C to copy, Command V to paste. And we're gonna put this on a, another layer here. And this is gonna be our acrylic layer. And we want to go ahead and adjust our kerf offset here because every laser has a kerf. We want this acrylic to fit in without any gaps at all. And if we just left it as is, the acrylic would basically just fall out of it because there's missing material where the cut was. So we have measured out our kerf to be uh, 0.018 inches. That gives us a nice tight fit between pieces that we cut out and insert into cut out wood. So that's what we're going to use for this layer. So it will actually cut it out slightly bigger. You can see it's outward and we're going to hit okay on this. And that will make sure that our kerf is accounted for and our acrylic pieces will fit in nice and tight. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. We're going to hit command D. We actually don't need the duplicate because when you do an offset, it automatically duplicates it. 
So that's why I just deleted the, the duplicate that was on here because we didn't need it. I thought it deleted it. And we're gonna put that on a different layer and we're going to use our offset tool to give it a slight offset just in case the project moves between putting powder coat into this engraving. And um, we're just going to do an outward offset. We'll hit OK with that. That is going to be a fill. I'm going to hide this just to make sure we're getting everything that we need. Yeah, that's, we can delete this. So you can see what we're doing here is we're going to make this green layer. It's just going to be a really low laser power layer that is, again, just slightly bigger. We have found that our powder coat setting is not powerful enough to burn through our masking tape, but is powerful enough to melt our powder coat. So we make our powder coat burning layers slightly bigger to ensure that we melt all the powder coat that is in the engraved area. And that's why we kind of did that offset. So we'll do the same thing here to um, get those settings in. So that's basically it. All we need to do now is uh, get our settings from our material library that we need. So for our cutting, we're going to go to our wood setting and we're going to use our nice ply and assign that layer. And then for our blue layer, which is our engraving layer, uh, we're gonna use a nice deep engraving. And then for our red layer, we're going to use our acrylic cutting setting. Oh, see, it, once I changed that, it got rid of our kerf offset, so I'm glad I checked that. 0 0.018. Okay, and finally for our powder coat, we're going to use our powder coat setting. I already put a note in here for us to ensure that we defocus our laser and um, check that air assist is off. Important that air assist is off with powder coat, otherwise your air assist will just blow all the powder coat away. So I'm going to just verify. Yep, our air assist is off. So we are good, I believe, to get to the laser. All right, so now without moving it, I'm gonna apply the powder coat to our text, and then we're gonna run our powder coating, but I'm gonna defocus the laser. I'm actually gonna move it up to as high as it will go, and I'm gonna do it's that light pass, and we're gonna see that it won't burn through the tape, but it will melt the powder coat, and that's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> Okay, so it did melt, everything's good there, but it did kind of melt off a little bit more than I would have liked. So we're gonna run another pass. I'm just gonna spread this excess back over and do it again. Perfect. 
All right, so we probably should have engraved a little bit deeper because as we pulled the tape off from here, some elements of the time pulled up with the tape and it's not very deep. So we should have engraved that a little bit deeper, but everything else looks pretty good. Obviously we'll have to clean this up a little bit. Probably should have covered the entire thing with tape, uh, but we'll just sand that so it's clean. Now we can go ahead and cut our pieces of acrylic to fit in here. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. 